I'm standing with President Trump. This is the name of a poll I received. Whether you're on the left side of the aisle or the right, one thing you cannot deny is that President Trump has emerged from that assassination attempt looking pretty damn heroic. Now that he picked J.D. Vance as his vice president, polls are coming out, and I did get polled. I want you to hear Trump's very brave-sounding message at the end of this poll, but let's tackle a few questions. Here is how it was presented. Now, you see the Trump J.D. Vance or Trump Vance logo uh, make America great. Shout out to Mike Pence. Name is completely removed. Poor Pence at home somewhere. Like, damn, my name used to be there where Vance's is now. So here's how it started. From J.D. Vance, President Trump told me all about you. He said, I should speak to you first now that I've been selected as his vice presidential nominee. Now, we know it's a bunch of BS, but I like the way it sounds. It's personal. Came right to my phone. Wow. I'm kind of touched. But let's hear some of the questions. And I like how they kind of do this stuff because my, the Democratic polls, in my opinion, don't feel as personal as the Trump polls do. So I can certainly see how Trump gets a lot of love and adoration. Here's the first question. And he states, I'd be honored if you would answer these questions, which is also a personal message. But here's the first question. How long have you been a Trump supporter? And then they give you a selection, one year, one to three years, four to six years, or even seven plus years. Now, obviously, Trump has been in the, in the news, media, and everything else for, you know, decades. So it could easily be longer than seven years before he even got into politics. Hell, I tend to lean left on a lot of social issues, but I would love to have $2 gas, a good economy. Inflation is crazy right now, so fair enough. But some would say that Trump is not responsible for all of that, but I certainly support the hell out of some $2 gas at the pump right now, not to mention affordable groceries. Here's a second question. Are Biden's open border policies destroying our beautiful country? The two obvious answers are yes, make America great again, and then, of course, no. In regards to Biden's border policies, I've stated before on my own live shows, I'm no fan of the way Biden handled the border. Fact is, his vice president, Kamala Harris, stated for at least a couple of years, there was no real problem at the border. I think everybody would agree now that's kind of bullshit what she stated. Um, so I'm not a fan of Biden's border policies. But the question is, is his policies destroying our beautiful country? I'm not quite there yet for the simple fact is I strongly believe that most Americans are not dealing with uh, undocumented immigrants at all. It's happening, in a, it's happening in a few major American cities, but there are plenty of places you can go in this country where they're not really dealing with undocumented immigrants at all. So the idea that uh, undocumented residents are destroying our beautiful country, I personally think that might be an overstatement, so I'm not quite there on there yet. Nevertheless, I am totally behind uh, Trump or anybody else that wants to secure our border. I do believe a sovereign nation should have a secure border. Question number three, was your family better off under Trump's America first agenda? Hmm. That's a very common, very popular question. I think a lot of folks would say so economically. I brought up the price of groceries. I brought up the price of gas and things like that. However, I have stated several times that um, I strongly believe what President Trump is offering in 2024 is different. It, it's a lot of additions to that than what we had in uh, 2016 to 2020. So when you start talking about do you favor Trump's economy or do you favor Trump's America from that period and compare it to the Biden administration, a lot of folks are going to favor what Trump had to offer. However, as I'm pointing out, and I will give you some details, what Trump is offering this go round is completely different than what he offered in 2016. Economically, the same. He's offering a great job numbers, unemployment, get that way down. He's offering a good economy, affordable groceries, getting the price of fuel down and things like that. However, there's a lot more that he's offering this time, such as 
granting immunity to law enforcement, which I'm not a big fan of. He's also likely to have at least a solid six to three, never, or perhaps even a seven to two Supreme Court majority. That could easily happen under Trump's watch for at least another 20 to 30 years. That wasn't on the table in 2016. I brought up that children now in some states are for, being forced to read the Bible, to look at the Ten Commandments. A lot of folks favor that. No problem with that. But I'm not a fan of forcing one particular religion on children, even if they happen to be from a different religion. So that wasn't on the table in 2016 as well. Not to mention um, America's stance on abortion has changed significantly since 2016 and 2024. So was I better off during 2016 Trump's America First agenda? Economically, a lot of people were. I've gotten a different job. I, actually, financially, I'm probably a little bit better off now, but I'm not going to give Biden credit for that or blame Trump or anything like that. But all of those other things I mentioned, and particularly his claim that he wants to give police immunity from prosecution that wasn't on the table in 2016, that is concerning to me. And it will come up in a little bit before we get to Trump's heroic statement at the end. And I do want you to watch what he had to say at the end. Makes him look like a brave ass guy if you ask me. Next. Do you oppose non-citizens non -citizens voting in American elections? Hell yeah, I do. All day, every day. I don't believe if you're not a citizen in this country, you should be able to come from somewhere else, come into America, and alter how we vote in this country. That is wrong as long as the days are. However, I will say in one slight exception, if you came in this country... And you served in the military, particularly in a combat zone, which some of these folks have. I might make an exception for them. If you're going to send somebody off to war where they could possibly be possibly get killed, damn it, I don't think giving them a ballot is that bad of a uh, a trade off. So maybe in that case, otherwise, hell no, a non citizen should not be able to vote. Next, do you stand with President Trump against election interference? Hell yeah, as a, the comment, yes, MAGA, or no. Um, I'm not, I don't want anybody being allowed to cheat on a damn election. The election should be free and fair. However, I disagree with the statement, do you stand with Trump against election interference? Because I do believe that Trump is okay with election interference if it works in his favor. Um, an example I would give is in during the 2020 election, Trump was all over television when Biden was leading in the state of North Carolina, saying that there was widespread fraud, widespread voter fraud taking place in the state of North Carolina. Towards the end of the election, once we got close to November, Trump took the lead in the polls in North Carolina and ultimately won that state's electoral college votes. He never mentioned fraud in that state again. So you got weeks of you on tape or on video at rallies saying that they are cheating in North Carolina. But then the minute the state goes to you, you don't care anything else about the cheating. So I am 100% against election fraud. However, I'm kind of uh, on the fence in regards to whether Trump is. I think Trump is against fraud when it comes to Democrats cheating. But if it happens to be done by somebody that's doing it in his favor, I don't personally think uh, he's against it. So I'm against election fraud, but I don't know if he's totally against it. And I'll leave it at that. Last question, and I do want you to hear his statement at the end. Can President Trump and I count on your support in November to win back the White House? Yes, MAGA or no, um, can, they, can Trump count on my personal support? I don't believe Trump is a bad president. I certainly uh, think that what he, his performance 2016 to 2020, on paper, I think he was worthy of a second term. I think he should have been reelected. However, he liked to insult. He liked to tweet. He liked to make enemies. And that actually had consequences. I, like I said, I'm not a big fan of President Biden. 
the the biggest sticking point with me with President Trump is him getting on stage and promising to give police immunity from prosecution if he is elected. For me, until that is explained in some way, fashion, or form that I can understand and somewhat reason with, that would be a deal breaker for me. Fact is, I drive a lot during my day job. And the last thing I want to ever happen is to be pulled over by a member of law enforcement that has complete immunity, regardless of how the stop goes or how it turns out. So I need more explanation on that before I could, you know, get behind Trump. And I don't know if he's going to end up giving that. But here is the end statement that President Trump made at the end of the poll, which I find to be very heroic considering what just happened to him last week. Fear not, I am Donald Trump. My first rally since I selected J.D. Vance as your next vice president is July 20th. Before I step back on stage, will you chip in and pledge your support one more time? Unity, peace, MAGA. Now, a couple of things in there. Obviously, it's a request to donate money to his campaign. No big deal. Most polls do that. So that's not a strike towards Trump. That's what politicians do. I like the fact that he starts out by saying, fear not. I am Donald Trump with an exclamation point. Damn it. That attempt on my life is not going to stop me from getting out before the people. Makes him look like a hero to me, not to mention the whole photo of him holding up his fist, telling you to fight on to begin with. Makes it look like he's willing to put up a shut up. He's not just all talk. So I do give a shout out to him. But President Biden right now has been diagnosed with COVID and he's canceled his whole damn schedule. Yet somebody shoots at Trump and within a week he's back out campaigning. Just compare the contrast to that. It does make Trump look significantly more stronger than Biden. He only has COVID. Now, if he's walking around sick and can barely breathe or something like that, maybe, but he should let the people know. Standing on stage at a rally where nobody can get to your ass anyway, you know, even with COVID, you can do that. I mean, put on a mask if you really want to uh, be cautious, but there's, yeah, him canceling the schedule because he has COVID and Trump continuing to press on, even though somebody tried to take his life, speaks volume. But not only that, but look at the end of his statement. Unity, peace, and MAGA. Now, that's a bit different for President Trump. Trump calling for unity is like me calling for somebody to lose weight. <laughs> I don't know. I'd have to see how it turns out. But shout out to President Trump. Ever since that assassin's bullet grazed his ear, he has not been very divisive. So perhaps he's had an epiphany. Maybe he's realized that I am not invincible and shit ye talks may have violence bestowed upon me. So perhaps he realizes now that even though he's surrounded by secret service, if somebody really wants to, they can still get to your ass. He's been touched. Maybe we'll see uh, if it'll make him change his tune. I would submit to you, had he done a more peaceful and unifying approach to regain his place back in the White House a year or two ago, he'd be a shoe in to get in. But we'll see what happens. Let your boy know in the comments, though. Do you see Trump as looking heroic, getting back out there after being literally, uh, somebody literally trying to take his life less than a week ago or about a week ago? That's pretty heroic, if you ask me. Let me know in the comments. As always, feel free to smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, how would you have answered these poll questions if you received them? Catch you in the next video.